Hi, I'm Özge Gülsuna from Metro Power Lab Research Group at Middle East Technical University. And I'm here to present our research project, Design of a Printed Circuit Board Motor with Integrated Driver for Metro EEE Student Academic Research Program Start 2020 and 21. Our team is quite crowded, namely Furkan Karakaya, Furkan Tokgöz, Gökhan Çakal, Ercan Bal and I are working on this project. Also, Dr. Ozan Kaysan is our advisor. Printed circuit board motors are motors with bindings that are manufactured using PCB technology. Each and every day, PCB motors are becoming more and more popular. Faster design and production, combined with readily available manufacturing technologies, make this type of motor advantages over other technologies. Therefore, academic research on PC board motors gained an upwards acceleration over the past years. In fact, a couple of our colleagues, Furkan Tokgöz and Gökhan, have been working on optimizing the winding design for the axial flux permanent magnet motor. Their work has given us experience for this project, and using their optimized design applied to our motor, it will increase the efficiency within our design specifications. One of the main challenges of designing a PCB motor is their low phase inductance, in other words, short time constant. Low number of turns and relatively large effective air gaps negatively affect the phase inductance. Trace width, copper thickness and thickness of the composite circuit board material FR4, on the other hand, are the limitations of the manufacturing process, thus we, can, thus we cannot further increase on these. Driving a low inductance motor is a challenging task. Having a low inductance motor requires high switching frequencies to maintain the current ripple under control. High current ripple means high torque ripple, which is not desirable. The most general solution in the industry is to add line inductors for the phases. These inductors increase the time constant of the circuit, thus reducing the current ripple. This solution inherently contradicts with the axial flux permanent magnet motors power and torque dense nature and it also adds complexity. Adding series inductor also lowers the agility of the motor which can be interpreted as the fastness of the response or um, response time. It also increases the conduction losses and overall motor become less efficient. The more preferred method is to increase the switching frequency of the motor driver which can also reduce the current ripple while maintaining the agility of the motor. High switching frequencies have been a goal that is hard to achieve for over, for over centuries. But wide band gap devices have been emerging for the last decade. Gallium nitride switches, gun switches, are examples that have been starting to use widely in the industry. Their low on resistance and low input capacitance are two advantages that are suitable for this task. Uh, when we look at our magnetic design, it starts with analytical modeling of the system. In our case, our motor, of, our motor is, uh, has winding topology of radial winding. Um, actually, it's not radial winding, it's unequal width radial winding. It's just like a radial winding, but uh, the thickness of the trace increases radially. Uh, it decreases the copper loss in general. The analytic modeling starts with the derivation of the air gap ma magnetic flux density. Then the flux linkage can be calculated. Induced phase voltages are computed as the second step using other factors such as layer number and winding factor. And finally, considering the phase currents and nominal speed, the output torque is produced. After our basic design ready, the genetic algorithm is used uh, with adequate parameters for our motor. The algorithm needs parameters to choose from and the parameters to be optimized are selected as outer diameter, inner diameter, pole count, turn number and such. Some of these values are set constant as our needs such as rotation permanence is constant, copper thickness is constant and nominal, nominal speed is constant. The primary purpose of this process is to get the objective function optimized, which in our case our objective function is, is to maximize the torque density in terms of torque per liters. After running the optimization study, the converged, converged results are listed below and 
As you can see, the selected values are highlighted. In order to check our analysis results and verify the optimized parameters, a finite element analysis study had to be done. The finite element model of the machine is con constructed on ANSYS Maxwell 3D Solar and magnetic field density distrib distribution can be seen in the figure below and it also adds up with the analytic results. After the design was completed, the PCB stator is manufactured and parameters such as inductance, DC resistance, capacitance were tested. Final PCB, as you can see in the right, had four layers of two old copper, which is the thickness of the copper, and it had total of 1.6 mm thickness. But there was a flow in the simulations. Eddy currents flowing on the copper surface of the windings due to the changing magnetic field of the parent magnets did not show up in the finite element analysis. New analysis had to be made in order to reduce, reduce this loss and reach the desired efficiency. This loss is actually quite hard to define analytically thus it cannot be included on the genetic algorithm. We made the required changes and we reduced the track bits to uh, eliminate this effect and the loss is reduced about 10 times after the uh, narrower track width. So when we look at the electrical design side, our proposed motor driver has strict rules to obey. Uh, it should have a small form factor, smaller than 10 cm squared, and it should be as efficient as efficient as possible to keep the terminals in control in a closed environment. The inverter stage it is designed to work with 48 volts DC, but switches we use uh, support up to 80 volts, and they can supply 7 amperes per phase, which means with its uh, peaks of 10 amperes. The main control algorithm is not selected yet, but it will be optimized in terms of uh, fastest response, meaning that the highest controller frequency. The communication interface interface selected as USB with optional CAN integration, controller area network protocol. It consists of, and yeah, our uh, driver board consists of two sub parts, namely the power stage and the controller stage. The power stage is the inverter stage where the DC to AC, AC inversion happen. It consists of three half bridges and we used gallium nitrate half bridge mod modules here. These modules include two gallium uh, FETs field effect transistors and gate driver with bootstrap configuration in a single package. The earth connection as well as ground is required for parasitic problems. Uh, low voltage circuitry is supplied from non-isolated converters designed with TI WebEnge tool. And in terms of protection, we have reverse voltage pr protection in the DC input and LC fil filter again in the DC input. This is the con uh, power stage. The control stage consists of microcontroller unit uh, and in its peripherals in general. The selected MCU is F28-375D from Texas Instruments. It's a 32-bit MCU with two cores and it runs up to 100 MHz, which should be appropriate for our control loop frequency. The primary communication protocol and, and uh, from and to the motor is selected as USB 2.0. There are a variety of sensors place around this board. One of them is a temperature sensor and the other one is an encoder. MAQ470 is an whole effect rotary position sensor and the selling point of the sensor was its ability to sense the magnetic field in an off-axis application. In our case, this feature helps us to reduce the axial length by almost 20%. The first prototype of the, dri the driver board is tested throughout. The individual components such as power supplies, current sensors, encoder and digital converters are verified and controlled, controlled through MCU. 
While working on switching test, we decided that we might want to implement a filter for the outputs of, outputs of the hot pitch modules to reduce the EMI and protect the motor, the windings, from the switching noise. So we had to make a second version and we changed a couple of things. The test shows that we do not need to implement an isolation between, between the power and control stages. A careful layout design is enough. This also meant that we got rid of the bulky isolated converters. Earth connection is added for a path for the stray inductance to stray current to flow. Extra screw holes are added for better thermal conduction between the switches and the heatsink. Location of the temperature sensor is optimized and now it's much closer to the transistors. And, last, the U and lastly, the USB connector is changed from Type-C to more rigid one. The reason behind this is Type-C connector is not stable when the motor is running and it's subject to vibrations. Before we start the production, we 3D printed the assembly to examine it further and get a grasp of it. Then we proceed. The motor had three main mechanical parts. The casing, where the outer case, uh, the rotor, the rot rotating piece, and the, and the magnets are um, connected to that, and the shaft, and it's connected to the rotor, as you may guess. So, uh, then we start to pro produce our, uh, the manufacture our motor. For the main body, as we call casing, it is machined from aluminum to achieve a better power per kilogram ratio. The minimum wall thickness is selected as 3 millimeters, and that is the common consensus around the manufacturers, as thinner parts are harder to manufacture. So we decided to manufacture these parts in our facility, specifically in our robotics laboratory, Rolab, uh, and we had to use CNC router. The learning curve for CNC router was a bit steep, but we managed to, managed to fabricate our parts in tolerances we need, as you can see from the photos. And these are the finished parts, they are looking very shiny. The rotor back cores are plasma cut from 2mm steel plate and the magnets are glued to it with a guide. Uh, and the shaft, pe shaft piece is designed to be turned on a lathe. In fact, this is how it's pro produced. Uh, and I would like to thank Professor Afshar Saranlı for his help throughout the manufacturing process and in terms of opening up his research lab stores for us. He even turned this shaft piece for us, which we use right now. Another person to thank is Emre Tanfener from Mechanical Engineering Department. He also helped us to use and understand the CNC rotor and use it more effectively. These are the uh, assembly pieces. As you can see, uh, they fit quite well and they work as we need. And to test our motor, we had to build this test setup. It enabled us to load the motor with DC motor uh, coupled to it at different power ratings. Also, we, this meant that we could use it as a generator and test our machine in generating mode. Now, we are currently waiting for our updated PCBs. Then we will continue our test and finalize the project. Um, and more results will um, be available after them. I think that's all. I would like to thank you all for your attention and have a nice day.